World in Peril. In a series of armored offensives, Germany has carried its blitzkrieg from Poland to France through city and countryside. The Africa Corps has devoured mile after mile of the North African desert, gateway to the oil-rich Middle East. Huge panzer divisions have smashed across the vast borderlands of the Soviet Union. The Allies, with firm resolve, have gathered their forces to begin the showdown with the Axis. Millions have volunteered to join the war effort, the industrial might of America turning to arm the Allies as the indomitable British island becomes the springboard for a mighty Allied counter-offensive. But victory will require more than just ships, tanks, planes, and armies of brave young soldiers. It will require the leadership of bold, decisive tacticians. In this dire situation, the leaders of the Allies marshal their finest commanders to lead the fight for freedom. Desert Duel. January 1942. Italy has struck into North Africa, intent on creating a Mediterranean Empire. This opens the way for the German war machine to secure the gateway to the Middle East. If the Axis succeeds here, the Wehrmacht can slake its growing thirst for oil with the bottomless reserves of Arabia. Germany has sent the best to lead the best. Irvin Rommel will lead his newly assembled Africa Corps. He plans to use these same panzer troops which captured Poland with terrifying speed and ferocity to crush the greatly outgunned British troops entrusted with holding Egypt. The British have little to sustain them besides their bravery and wits. It will have to be enough for any hope for an Allied return to Europe rests on their shoulders. Russia? November 1940. Most of Europe has fallen to the German Blitzkrieg, and Britain stands as Germany's last major opponent, suffering under the aerial bombardment of her cities. Because of the infamous Russo-German non-aggression pact, much of the world has feared that the Soviets will eventually enter the war as another member of the Axis. But in the face of boundless German ambition for conquest, how long can the tenuous peace between these two military giants survive? Surely Germany's jealous eye has turned toward the Soviet Union and her fertile plains of black earth. Her vast oil fields. Her massive industrial capacity. It seems only a matter of time before the Wehrmacht attempts what even Napoleon's Grand Army could not accomplish. The Conquest of Russia.
Counter-Strike. November 1942. The unrelenting German army has established Fortress Europe, an enormous empire with daunting defenses. But the German war machine has stalled. In the Soviet Union, the indomitable Russian people exact a huge price from the invading Axis army. In North Africa, heroic British troops have blocked the German drive for Middle Eastern oil. Across the Atlantic, America has joined the fight, giving the Allies a massive infusion of strength. The time has come to strike back. First, the Allies must drive the Axis out of North Africa, clearing a path to the soft underbelly of Europe. Meanwhile, they are making preparations for a great northern hammer blow. Thus, the Axis will face a two-pronged counter-offensive. First, the Allies must capture North Africa and strike up into Italy. Then, a million men may storm the battlements of Fortress Europe. From these beachheads, the Allies will have to take back Europe, city by city, town by town, until the war is won. the Middle East have slipped like sand through Germany's fingers. Irvin Rommel and his Africa Corps were once the most feared fighting force on the globe. But the unshakable Tommies guarding the gateway to Asia Minor proved to be more than his match and have shattered Rommel's armored spear. Having stopped Rommel's men at the brink of Axis victory, the British now forced the Africa Corps to scramble backwards through the sand. The initiative lost, the Germans struggled desperately to keep their oil-starved machines from being swallowed by the desert. Now the foundation has been laid for an Allied return to Europe. All that remains to be achieved is the capture of North Africa. From Africa to Europe to victory. Red Army. After more than 2,000 days of war, Allied victory has won peace for Europe. Squeezed by Allied forces on two fronts and devastated by the legendary Russian winter, the Axis has succumbed to exhaustion. Following the disaster at Stalingrad, the Axis forces were driven back across Eastern Europe and into the heart of Germany itself. Triumphant Russian troops now walk the streets of Berlin. Soviet leaders now boast about the impregnable new Soviet border, safe from any attack for years to come. At last, Europe is free. The war is over.
Allies on the mark. Europe free. After more than 2,000 days of war, Allied victory has won peace for Europe. Allied field commanders, like knights of old, have led their valiant troops to win the grail of freedom, slaying the armored German dragon. The Russian assault on the Eastern Front mauled the bulk of the Axis forces, while the British and Americans liberated France and pressed east, squeezing Germany from both sides. In the end, valorous Allied troops captured Berlin itself. American, British, and French forces finally greeted their Allied Russian counterparts, joining hands in Berlin. The war is over.